The next like 60 seconds of this video aren't really part of this video. It's just a cute minute montage of all the precious human beings I met in Ireland. So enjoy that and then we'll get on to what we're really talking about. It hasn't been too long ago My worst enemy Seems to become my closest friend Oh, this for Please don't come again Do I have to do the introduction? Yes! Do you know how this works? Yeah, you get too anxious to film the introduction with a cloud because you don't know what to say. Boom! <laughs> True fan! Do you wish to talk to Jackson is Adam Dunn? August Falchi Gudi on Fian. Fiesca? I cannot remember the word for. Fiesca. Oh, Fishon. Fishon. There you go. Duh. Duh. Did you do it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. Today, Jackson and I are going to be talking about toxic masculinity. For any of you who don't know Irish, uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Jackson or Jackson Milo on YouTube. I'm almost 17, and if you did not know, Ash is in Ireland. I identify as trans FTM, but I'm completely comfortable with they, them, or he in pronouns. So, my first question for you is how would you personally define toxic masculinity? Well, growing up with two brothers who are quite masculine, I'd kind of say the definition to me of toxic masculinity masculinity is kind of forcing people into gender stereotypes so that would be like say if I identified as male I should play sport I should wear certain clothes I should speak a certain way I should walk a certain way talk a certain way you know it's it's, it's a lot of toxicness <laughs> if that's even a word <laughs> I asked this question on Twitter though and there was a lot of confusion I don't think yeah. a lot of people are actually familiar with what it is it's it doesn't mean that masculinity is it's bad inherently bad anyway at all. Uh, what toxic masculinity is, is it forces men or masculine people into certain very rigid stereotypical gender roles. These gender roles are usually violent and harmful and sexually aggressive. It's not just like big muscles as tox <laughs> toxic masculinity. Kind of like your personality being affected, how you should treat certain people, how you should uh, present yourself. Yeah, and toxic masculinity says that this is the only way to be a yeah, man. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And if you aren't like this, then you're not a man. Then you're a wimp, then you're a fairy, then you're a pussy, then you're yeah. gay. It makes you feel invalid as even if you were a cis male like for me being a trans male it's that bit worse because people think that i want to be a man so in order for me to want to be a man i need to act the way a grown man would act or a true man real man would act but even for cis males if they don't act that way they're still not seen as a true man or straight away people jump to the thing oh they're gay obviously because yeah toxic masculinity can affect cis men it can affect trans people it can affect women toxic masculinity can affect anyone but how does it specifically kind of interact with trans identities. For me, people think that I'm not really trans because I act extremely feminine because that's the way I'm most comfortable acting. Like my girlfriend is sitting like two feet away from me and people are so shocked when I say that I have a girlfriend. I remember I was talking to my mom one time and I was like, mom, I'm kind of scared to start testosterone. And she was like, why are you having like doubts? And I was like, no, I'm scared that when I start it, I'm gonna be expected to act like a man. And I won't be able to, you know, like skip around the house the way I normally skip or walk in and be like, hello. Cause I know that even if I do have a deep voice I will probably still sound what would be known as gay but I'm completely comfortable with that. Uh, I remember a quote from John Tyler Turner. Yes. He said people in his work said that everybody thought he was a gay guy. But he said the thing that he took out of it was they thought he was a gay guy. Yeah. And not, you know, anything else. And I'm, that's exactly like me. I'm like, once people respect my identity, I don't care what they think of me because mm -hmm. I know who I am. I have this personality. It might be effeminate or it might be, I don't know, flamboyant or emotional or whatever. It's my personality though. It doesn't have anything to do with my gender. Exactly. Literally, we went to see The Greatest Showman last night. Honestly, if you have not seen it, it's the best movie ever i was like crying and i i don't care like if i find something cute or adorable i'm like oh my god it's so cute and kate like she just like laughs with it she doesn't expect me to act any way manly and that's what i like about my relationship as well is that i finally found somebody who doesn't expect me to act like a man mm -hmm. like she's completely fine with me being me and that's what you need 
I love that. That's so cute. They're adorable, by the way. <laughs> Another way that it affects trans, masculine or trans men specifically, is it kind of creates this one route for mm -hmm. transition. Definitely. So, like, what would toxic masculinity say is the only way to transition? Uh, like, my brother, he's very kind of, you know, like, masculine kind of traits. Maybe for him or for other masculine people, they kind of expect me to maybe go to the gym, what we know as go out with the lads, catcalling a woman, maybe, or... Yeah, because, again, toxic masculinity yeah. is sexually aggressive, so... Definitely. I even watched the movies the other night where two women were catcalling a man, and it still annoyed me because... Oh, yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, it's not right. okay either. When I start, like, testosterone or start going through my transition, people kind of expect me not to wear nail polish or makeup or, you know, do my hair a certain way or keep, let my hair... I actually am letting my hair grow out right now because I want to have kind of, like, curls and little locks because, oh, I got my hair cut and I just, I just hated it. But it was it's a very luscious. I like it. Really I got good. it done because mm -hmm. when I first started dating Kate, I thought she wanted a masculine boyfriend. Ooh. So I cut my hair extremely so short. So you had, like, some internalized issues. She, going she on. gave it out to me so much afterwards. She was like, I don't care about your Aww. hair. But I was like, I thought you wanted a masculine boyfriend right. with a short, tight haircut. And uh -huh. <laughs> trust me, I mean, <laughs> a short, tight haircut and, you know, like presenting masculine. and Because I actually had quite long hair. Mm -hmm. But presenting and identification are two different things to me. So like, Absolutely. If, Clothes and haircut does not equal gender. My friend Kenzie says that men should definitely be allowed socially acceptably wear crop tops. I completely agree with this. Sure. I would wear a crop top if it was socially acceptable and if I had top surgery. I think I would be more comfortable to wear a crop top after top surgery than before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After top surgery, I would be completely comfortable, but right now I think it would be too much for my binder. Do all trans guys have to have top surgery? No, of course not. Right. Do all trans guys have to go on testosterone? No, definitely not. The one thing I say is that there is one choice about being transgender. So people are like, transgender is a choice. And I'm like, no, transgender is not a choice, but transitioning is. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a totally different transition route. I, for one, want to get on testosterone and top surgery. Some people want to get testosterone and no surgery. Some people don't want testosterone and want to get surgery, you know? Just like when people are like, oh my god, I like you have to get the surgeries to be a man. You're like, no, no you don't. And I know some trans guys who are totally binary guys, and they're pretty macho guys. They work out, they have really big muscles, and they don't have, nor do they want, top surgery. Exactly. Like for me, because I'm not on testosterone, I'd say if I did want testosterone soon enough, I started building, I probably would have a small enough chest. If I can build my chest enough- You can make them look like pecs! Exactly. Yeah. If I build my chest enough and I can get them to look like pecs, I won't get top surgery because it's a lot of money. But if I can't get to that stage, I will get it. Even if somebody couldn't get them to look like pecs and they just still wanted to do nothing about their that's chest, completely fine. they're still trans. Yeah, exactly. But these are things that toxic masculinity say, no, that's not right, that's not true, this is how you yeah. trans. One thing that actually was really negative towards me was actually, was I was with Kate the other day and we just come out of the cinema and we were waiting at the bus stop and I was just hugging her and everything was fine and this group of people walked up to me and they stood beside me and Kate and they were like I used to together and we were like yeah and because I go to an all-girls school which is not a shitty thing they were like oh you two must be lesbians and I was like no I'm actually a trans guy and they were like haha like what is that and I explained very briefly what trans was didn't need to go into like full explanation about it because it was basically none of their business they went out of their way to ask me in front of a bus stop full of people haha do you have a dick like, do you have a dick? And I'm like, mm -hmm. no. Did you get it cut it off? If I was trans, why would I get it cut <laughs> off? <laughs> like, <I> was, <laughs> they were so uneducated that it bothered me. I hate the fact that we're because I live in such a rough area. It's just I like, can't be myself. Like, I'm myself completely in my house and in Kate's house. But when it's outside, I kind of have to cut it short. Like, kind of rope in what the, like, stereotype is. Force that upon myself while I'm in my area. But the minute I'm, like, in town or the city centre, mm -hmm. like, I just flamboyant. Hello. Mm -hmm. How are you? You saw me at the meeting today I was like people yeah hello <laughs> this way I couldn't do that where I live because I most likely get beating up or like, really shit yeah people shout at me like like oh yeah a little tranny or like stuff like do you have a dick like the person that asked if I had a dick they literally shouted out a list of names to ask me which was my birth name they went through that effort they were like wasn't your name this this it was this wasn't it this and I was like even if you get it right I'm not gonna tell you right yeah it was so shitty and why do you care that much go like get a hobby the worst do anything else the why are you just shouting names at Jackson <laughs> in my gender therapy um all my friends told me when you go in do not mention anything about feeling feminine do not mention anything about right because uh, you have to stick to the masculine role in order for them to believe that you were trans or they'll gatekeep you so, out of any kind exactly. of help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I was talking to her about like the shark week, she was like, so how did you feel when you got your first one? I had, I actually said it to her in a way that didn't seem feminine or didn't seem masculine either. Because I said it to her, I was like, obviously I was not happy. It was uncomfortable, but I was happy that my body was working fine. I was a healthy person. My body was working okay. I did not have to get checked up or anything like that. And then she kind of like sat back a little bit. She's like, okay, I was not expecting that one. So it's 
a bit of toxic toxic masculinity is the fact that if you go in try and get help towards your transition if you if you're a trans male in ireland so most of the time not saying for every single person but you cannot talk about you know slightly questioning yourself doubting yourself in any type of way like mm-hmm. you, can't, you can't do that you just have to lie yeah that's so sad like feeling this pressure to lie to like healthcare providers mm. that is a broken system oh yeah definitely what do we do then to dismantle toxic masculinity? How do we break it down? How do we encourage people not to feed into it? I think the way you break down toxic masculinity and the best way to kind of break down anything is education. Absolutely. Like education fixes everything. Like for anybody who was kind of against me being trans or didn't believe in it, once I educated them and they actually stood around me and kind of watched me in my daily life, they started to believe in a way. Well, thank you, Jackson. I think this was a really This hotel room is getting so hot. Did you feel it? Oh, are my cheeks red? Mine are super red, aren't they? Yeah, but you're... (laughs) This is how you are. We also filmed a video over on Jackson's channel. It's about... The difference between non-binary and binary people and how we feel about our genders. And if in either way, one of them is invalid to the other, kind of. Okay, Okay, bye. bye! I hope your hurting goes away.